the story of Versailles is really too bad, actually. It's, it's more than any other palace, I would say, because first, why was uh, Versailles built originally, not by Louis XIV, by, by his father? Because he had been hunting in the neighborhood, coming from Saint-Germain-en-Laye or from um, Paris, and he was caught at night in the middle of nowhere and had to ask shelter to peasants to spend the night. So, due to that bad experience, he decided to build there um, a hunting lodge in, um, in 16, the 1620s, then, which was enlarged in the 1630s, and which became that chateau, uh, quite a, n not a royal house at all, but uh, a chateau, and that's what uh, he, Louis XIV inherited in 1650, in, when he became king at the age of five in 1630, 43. And uh, the king, Louis XIV spent his first night in, um, in Versailles in 1653. And uh, at that time, in that year, um, the, the king's bedchamber was on the first floor, but it was a very simple apartment. There were four apartments, main apartments in the, in the palace, in the four corner, in the chateau, I would say, in the four corners on the first floor, and more apartments on the ground floor. But nothing really important, and uh, we have no trace of very, very few evidence of the decor of that time, which was rather simple. And uh, so the Louis XIV started to work on the palace, in, on the chateau in 1661, um, to transform it in a sort of a fairy tale uh, chateau, uh, adding decoration mainly to the facades, to the roofs with gilt, lead, and so on. And then the, the palace became the, the backdrop for court receptions we were held in the gardens, and the apartments were um, transformed, but not changed, because it was still a private uh, palace, a private royal house, and not a public one. So it was not really open to the public at that time. It was not the Versailles we, we know. And today also we, we take for granted that the, the king's bedchamber is right at the center of the palace. But this is the evolution of a long process, and we'll see that there were many locations for the, the official bedchamber of the king as well as for the private bedchamber one, and even that at some point, the private bedchamber disappeared. This is the plan, yes, of this chateau uh, redecorated in 1661, and the bed, king bedchamber would be here, and another bedchamber here for the queen. So it's uh, with, they're separated by a central antechamber or drawing room. But as you can see, these apartments, symmetrical, but are very simple in their uh, construction, with a cabinet or private study here in the, in the corner pavilion. But this was going to change dramatically when in 1668, Louis XIV had uh, another ambition for Versailles, not only that hunting lodge or places where it can um, retrieve from the court, but to make it a much grander place, a real palace. And it changed totally the scale of the palace by building what we call the envelope that was going to encircle the former chateau on three sides, on the northern side, which is the facade that we can't see here, on the western side that we see here, and on the southern side here. So you have to imagine at that time a palace which was more or less a square one, but it was still a private uh, house for the king, unlike uh, Fontainebleau or the Tuileries or Le Louvre, which were the official uh, palaces. So the status was evolving, obviously, with a change in architecture, such a dramatic change, but it was still a private house mainly, and therefore the organization of space was um, not done to um, uh, allow big uh, cer state ceremonies, court ceremonies there. And especially the main device is that between the northern part of the envelope 
and the southern part, you had a terrace with this wall hiding the former chateau behind. So the, the building is behind. And uh, so this terrace was not really convenient in, in northern, northern France, especially in the, in the, the winter months. So that we'll see what happened to, to it later on. But if we look at the plan of the chateau, on the first uh, floor. So the, this uh, envelope was started in 1668 and completed in the middle of the 1670s, around 1676. And at that time, it was clearly um, uh, uh, a symmetrical um, plan with a symmetry between on the north of the envelope, the king's apartment, on the south of the envelope, the queen's apartment, and in between the terrace. And both apartments were organized exactly the same way, with first uh, a guard's room, then a nanti chamber, then a bed chamber, then the cabinet, then what became sometimes a private bed chamber, but a study, and then a second private uh, closet here. And it's the same for the queen, with the bed chamber of the queen being here, in symmetry to the king's bed chamber here. And uh, though this is um, not a public palace yet, there were already two uh, private bedchambers organized in the former chateau. You can see the structure, the architecture of the chateau here, and you see the private bedchamber of the king here, the private bedchamber of the queen here. So it's a very clear, very cynical plan for this new. Um, new uh, palace, um, and, but it was not going to last much. Um, so you can see how it was organized on the, on the first floor with this detail of the plan. Here we have the, um, this series of rooms with a very elaborate decoration. We'll see pictures later on of the ceilings painted by Charles Lebrun, and each room being devoted to a god of the antiquity and a planet. And the central room in the king's apartment, if we start here, it's the Mars drawing room, the, the god's room, the Saturn first antechamber, the bedchamber with Apollo, the great study, the main drawing room being uh, Jove, and then, um, no, this is Mercury, sorry, Apollo, Jove, uh, Saturn, and uh, Venus, the last one. And it was uh, symmetrical in the Queen's apartment. And um, the organization was very um, grand for the two main apartments. And of course, the rooms in the former chateau were redecorated to accommodate the two private bedchambers. And you can see uh, a detail that we have forgotten, because at that time, because of the terrace and its windows opening onto a wonderful view onto the gardens, because of the terrace, it was hard to organize the space in these private bedchambers. And eventually, they had to close the windows on the courtyard side. You see here, it's Blackened. And here, if you see this coupe on the terrace and the king's bedchamber, private bedchamber, you see the alcove, as it was mentioned yesterday, um, that we don't have in the other bedchamber. And you see that this window has been blocked, walled up with stones, so it's um, a blind window with a mock window on the, on the facade. And um, so during the, the work done in the palace, for some times, the Saturn drawing room was used as a private bedchamber for the king, but the main one being the Apollo, the Apollo drawing room. And as you can see, both in the main apartment and the private apartment, there is a total symmetry. This is the Apollo drawing room. Um, after 
it became the throne room, but we'll see later on when. But this is how the, the room is organized. You see it's a big square room, almost or, uh, slightly more than 100 square meters, and with a painted ceiling with the four parts of the world in the four corners, Apollo in the center. And you have between the roll bed here, and we still have three hooks above the cornice to hold the canopy of the bed, and later on the canopy of the, the throne. So this is the, the first, uh, the, the main bed chamber on the, in the envelope. And this is a project for the Queen's private bed chamber on the courtyard side. And I was mentioning that there was no alcove in the main bedchamber. Uh, the alcove being um, in fashion, as it was reminded by uh, yesterday, um, after the Hotel de Rambouillet sent the trend, but it was more for uh, private spaces. So you had alcoves in the king's private apartment, in the king's private bedchamber, and the queen's private bedchamber. And here, this is a project for the queens. And as you can see, there are two possibilities proposed by the Agence des Bâtiments du Roi, one with a straight um, architecture and the other one with a column supporting the, the, um, the beam. I know how to call it. So, but there was a, a revolution, if I can say so, a first revolution in this um, planification of spaces, of the use of spaces in, in Versailles in, um, from 1770, the idea of the king was to eventually move the, the court and the government from Paris to Versailles. But for that uh, reason, palace, as it has been drawn, was not, uh, was not convenient. The problem was the link between the two parts of the palace could be done only through the private apartments, so the private bedchambers, which is weird for a public uh, place, or through the terrace, which is totally impractical in, in the winter time. So to deciding to move the government in the court to Versailles led to great uh, thinking and uh, new plans for Versailles, and especially to create uh, a link between the two official apartments that would save the private uh, apartments. And that's what we have, so with the, the creation of the Hall of Mirrors. And uh, so we are in 1678, and the Hall of Mirrors was completed in 1684. Um, and um, so it created this uh, link between the two official apartments but it had dramatic effects on the general plan of the building because, as you can see, the windows on the terrace were blocked because of the, these wonderful uh, mirrors in the Hall of Mirrors in the Great Gallery. And so they had to reopen the windows on the courtyard for the two private bedchambers. And um, so eventually to change completely the decor of the room and the disposition of the bed, because it should be moved to the western, to the western wall here. And um, in, in that time, um, the only, the other uh, um, consequence, and main, main consequence, is that the former king's apartment became a series of reception rooms, badly needed for the court uh, ceremonies and the court receptions, especially in winter, what we call the soirée d'appartement, where the king receives court and guests three evenings a week. And so that's why the series of rooms was recomposed with the bedchamber, which was eventually abandoned, it was not convenient to have it in the middle of these reception rooms. So it was eventually moved to the um, former private bedroom of the Queen. And, um, and another bedchamber, but a symbolic one, 
was moved to the former antechamber to the um, Mercury, Mercury drawing room. And therefore, you had a structure with the new state apartment here, which became an empty apartment, not to be used, not to be lived in. The apartment of the king was eventually moved to that part of the palace, and uh, then the queen's apartment remained here. That didn't change until the, the revolution, until the end of the Ancien Regime. So you have this uh, first great uh, um, change in the very well balanced architecture of the palace as conceived at the time of the envelope. We don't have this symmetry anymore, definitely, and uh, to the infortune of the queen, because she loses her private apartment. And on the left hand side, you see a map of these, uh, these rooms. First, where you had the, the king's private bedchamber and the queen's private bedchamber. So then the king's bedchamber was moved here, with this room still belonging to the queen's. She just had lost her private bedchamber, but otherwise she had uh, here an antechamber in G, F was uh, a study, but then it stopped, her apartment stopped there, and you had the king's uh, bedchamber. And um, later on, uh, in 1684, the final conceit was uh, implemented by moving out the queen completely of her, the rooms that she still had in this part of the palace and to create a proper apartment, official apartment for the king, starting with the guard's room here, a first antechamber here, a second antechamber, the bedchamber, and then at the center, as it was before, actually, a central drawing room, and then the, the, the council cabinet for the, the work with the, with the ministers. So we are here in, in 1684, and uh, with a, a change of status, because now the official apartment of the king was definitely moved here. So this is the state apartment, not to be used, the queen's apartment here, with no private apartment anymore, but a small series of rooms here as private, uh, for her private life, private drawing rooms and so on. But very, very small in narrow, around a narrow courtyard. And the king's apartment, official apartment, spending, uh, spanning here, and private rooms for the king, especially for the decor, uh, for the collections, for the, the royal collections. And here we have drawings, plans for the, the new king's bedchamber. You see with the queen's closet next to it, with, uh, which was um, made as big as possible, and with the decor that was eventually done. And this is a drawing of 1699, so of really what the the bedchamber of the king was looking like. Um, it's the northern wall with a fireplace, and you see even the clock on the mantelpiece and a set of three pairs of vases on it. So it's a very precise uh, drawing to give you an idea of the king's bedchamber um, in those uh, from 1684 onward with a bed, and this is important because the, the French bed traditionally is a four-poster bed, and you see here that it's how it is designed, quite um, not as fancy as British English beds, I would say, a much more severe, much more austere bed, with the beauty of it being the, the fabric that is being used, so you can't see it on the, on the drawing. And, of course, the, the rail, the balustrade, dividing the room into two. On that project, you see that the rail is stretching from the south wall to the north wall, but eventually we see on plans that it was making an angle to keep this door open towards the, the Hall of Mirrors. For the... And this is what you can see on this tapestry, showing the audience of the Cardinal Kiji, envoy from the Pope, in, but it takes place in Fontainebleau, but it gives you a very good idea of these very rich French beds, four-poster four, four beds, 
um, and the balustrade, the rail, turning at an angle, so creating a, a special, specific space, more private space or more official space in the, in the corner of the, of the room. And what I didn't mention also is that you have here a cheminée à la royale, a new type of fireplace created in 1684. It's in the big, um, with the big success of the Hall of Mirrors with these uh, arches uh, covered with these big panes, mirror panes, that was also adopted for the fireplaces instead of having a painting or sculpture, bas relief, a low relief above the mantelpiece to have these big mirrors. And we'll see that in, 16, in the 1690s, they improved, they changed the, the technology, and they could make much larger panes. So again, there was a move towards these just plain uh, mirrors, looking like a one-piece mirror above the, the fireplace. In the meantime, as I said, the, the Mercury drink room was used as a, a stead bed chamber, not to be used. And it was uh, furnished with a, with a bed. This is a 19th century bed created for King Louis Philippe in the 1830s, but it's quite close in the spirit of a late 17th century bed. But this is not the four poster bed anymore, but a uh, lit à la duchesse with the, only the tester at the back and the, the canopy being hauled from the wall and only from the wall. And we know that for the safety of someone who sleeps in uh, Lille la Duchesse, at night in, in the royal apartments, the royal palaces, they were added a post in the front, so to be sure that the, the canopy wouldn't collapse or wouldn't fall on the person sleeping in the bed. So we have descriptions. Um, in the infiltrate. So this is the Mercury drawing room, so an official drawing room. And the Apollo drawing room became the, the throne room. Actually, in France, the throne room is not as important as it is in other countries because mainly uh, the main ceremonies take place in the, in the Hall of Mirrors. And uh, we'll see later on what was happening in the, in the throne room. But what we have lost of uh, that, the, the, the furniture, we have the inventories of the furniture of the bedchambers, the state apartment bedchamber, as well as the private bedchamber. But uh, what, um, what we have lost in the um, state apartment is the silver furniture that was there for about less than 10 years. Um, and it was um, amazingly magnificent. It was and seen anywhere else. You had everything uh, of the furniture in these rooms, like the, the antechamber, the bedchamber, the throne room, uh, and some furniture in the Hall of Mirrors as well were in solid silver. For example, in the, in the Mercury drawing rooms, so in the bedchamber, there was a seat rail between the platform and the parquet floor, which was in solid silver. It was weighting one ton of silver. And the chandelier was in silver, as well as a pier table between the two windows, and above it uh, a mirror. And the table was weighting uh, 350 kilograms of silver, whereas the frame of the mirror with allegorical figure was weighting 480 kilograms. So it was the, what was the most amazing part of the King uh, State apartment. The, the silver furniture that was admired by people coming from all over the world, I would say, uh, to see it and giving this white uh, shyness to the, to the room. Unfortunately, due to the war of the League of Augsburg, starting in 1688, the king eventually had to come to the conclusion that he had to melt it down to get back the, the monetary value of the silver. And everything was sent to the mint in Paris, and eventually, they got back uh, 21 tons of silver from the furniture in Versailles, mainly kept in Versailles. Um, this uh, silver furniture, you can see it in the throne room, though it's a very, not very accurate view, but you, here you have one of these big mirrors. Though the throne room had only two windows, but you see the mirror here, and this is the audience, official audience of uh, Piotr Potemkin, the ambassador of Moscovy to Louis XIV in 1681, actually when for the first time the 
former bedchamber of the king was used as a throne room for these audiences. There was then a new revolution in 1701, Related, I didn't tell you, but the queen died in July 1683. Um, so then the king was free to enlarge and reorganize his apartment. And that's what we have seen, actually, with the, the first rooms uh, in the previous plan that we are here. But um, the, in, 16, uh, in 1701, that was the peace of Rizvik, so the end of the League of Augsburg, so bringing peace to, to France and more, some money to the construction works, to the world works. And also, uh, the Duke of Anjou became King of Spain in 1701, and for a few weeks, while he was still at the court of France, Louis XIV told him that since he's the King of Spain, he should stay in a royal bedchamber. So he was staying in this bedchamber here for a few, a few weeks before going to Madrid. And at that time, Louis XIV realized that his grandson was staying in a much grander bedchamber than his in the corner, because at that time, the bedchamber was still here in the corner with a central drawing room here in the corner with only two small two windows at the corner of the room. So that's why he decided to replace the main drawing room by um, to by his chamber. This is the, the drawing of the wall towards the Hall of Mirrors with three doors, which were then eventually blocked with uh, tapestry uh, a fabric to create the alcove, a very narrow alcove with a new uh, design for the upper part of the wall above the roll bed. And you see here on the project, it's a lit à la duchesse. There is no post, or no post on the front but we'll see that eventually. And these are the projects for the uh, decor above the, the alcove. And eventually, it's this wonderful figure of France uh, looking after the king's sleep, which was modeled by Cousteau. And this is a drawing, very interesting drawing of the, the bedchamber as it was uh, completed in 1701 and showing some of the paintings that were there, uh, especially uh, two paintings um, here on the, um, on the wall by Dominica uh, and uh, a supposedly Raphael painting here, St. John at Patmos, and by Dominica it was King David. And we have most of the paintings um, which were on, inserted into the, the boiserie. And here you have them, especially five paintings by Valentin and which are religious paintings, the four apostles, and all of them are religious paintings except two paintings which are above the doors, which are two portraits by Van Dyck. And it's strange that uh, in the king's bedchamber we had um, these paintings by Van Dyck. This is a painting showing the, the room as it was after 1701, once it's refurnished, uh, redecorated, you can see. This is only the wrong day is the pilaster here doesn't exist, but otherwise it's quite precise. But what is strange is that it was commissioned to, for the series of tapestries of the history of the king, and was commissioned years after the event took part, which is the May 1693 first ceremony for the Order of Saint Louis, a military order created by Louis XIV. And this ceremony took place in the king's drawing room central drawing room, not in the king's bedchamber. But at that time, Francois Marot had forgotten, so he recreated the ceremony in the king's bedchamber. But for that reason, we have a, an interesting uh, image of that room. And that's where the uh, ceremonies, main ceremonies would take place, especially for the ambassadors, the European ambassadors coming to, for their official audience, the king in the king's bedchamber here. They would climb the queen's staircase, walk up this guard's room, first in the chamber, second in the chamber, and then be received in the, in the bed chamber with uh, the ambassador crossing the, the rail to, the, to, to see the king. And the Apollo drink room was used only for the audiences for um, non-European embassies. We had, uh, uh, a lot of them coming to Versailles, uh, 
So they took place, and the first time, as I said, it was used for the ambassadors of Moscow in 1688. But uh, otherwise, we had embassies from Morocco, from Algiers, from, uh, um, and uh, only three of them took place, were organized in the Hall of Mirrors in 1686 for the embassy of Siam and in, 16, in 1715 for the embassy from the Shah of Persia, and in 1742 for the embassy of um, the Ottoman Empire. And here it shows you, uh, though this uh, meeting took place in Fontainebleau, but with, in a bed chamber, which looks quite close to the one um, in Versailles, the, the visit of the uh, Frederick Elector of Saxony to Louis XIV in 1714, and um, it gives you a good idea of the type of ceremony taking place in, in the bedchamber. Both official ceremonies with uh, the courtiers, or also family ceremonies, like the Elector of Saxony being received by the, the King of France. And this is a wonderful drawing, uh, both in Paris by Karl Johann Konstedt, in the 1730s, showing you the, the room as it was still in the 1730s. And you have to understand that this, uh, this is the official apartment of the king, so it's a formal, um, a formal setting which was not changed, not fo following the fashion. Once it was created with its decor, uh, which was partly keeping decor of the 1680s, and um, the fabric also was used and reused year after year because there were two, two types of uh, fabrics used in the, in the apartments, uh, summer fabric and uh, winter fabric. And if I have time. And this is the, the drawing for the, the rail in, in the king bed chamber. And this is thanks to the evidence, the paintings, the few paintings that we have depicting the room, and these drawings in the archives, that um, the uh, reconstruction, the restoration of the bedchamber could be achieved in 1980, giving you quite a clear idea of what it was. And since we didn't have the, the brocade and the seat of chairs that was in the room, officially in the bedchamber, official bedchamber, you have the, the French bed, so um, here it's a four poster bed, two armchairs, or sometimes three armchairs, the third one being moved for the king inside the space of the bedchamber, and a series of stools of Poyon, uh folding stools. Um, in 1684, there were eight of them because of the size of the room. In 1701, they had to um, complete the set, to create a new set of 12 stools. So this is the official um, type of furniture. In the, in the king's uh, bedchamber. And fortunately here, when it was recreated and created in the 1980s, the only detail that is quite different from the, all the drawings and paintings is the canopy of the bed, which is very strict, uh, strict line. And uh, here, as you can see, the brocade, and I will finish with that, the brocade that was used for the um, restoration of the bedroom, since we don't have the model of the early 18th century, 1684, because it was a, a brocade from 1684 that had been reused and reshaped for 17, the bedroom of 1701. Uh, these were extremely costly fabrics, so they were used and used and used again until they were thrown, uh, thrown um, damaged, and then they were burned to get back the precious metal. And here, for the reconstruction, we used uh, samples, new samples, still in the collections of the Mobilier National, but not a commission of the time of Louis XIV, but a commission of the time of Louis XV in 1730, um, made um, and uh, kept, and eventually, strangely enough, uh, not used by the royal um, works until 1785, so it was delivered in 1733, but the fabric was not used until 1785, not in the king's apartment, but in the queen's bedchamber, in Marie Antoinette's bedchamber for the last years of the monarchy in, um, in Versailles for her bedchamber that you know um, uh, in, in the winter, winter months. And this is a detail of this uh, fantastic 
uh, fabric which it took 20 years to reweave it uh, in, on hand looms in, in Lyon. So this is what we now take for granted is that we have the, and it's the final vision of Louis XIV for the position of the, the bedchamber, the heart of the country, uh, here in the center of the palace. And as you can see with this wonderful uh, creation, uh, it, that was uh, related to the evolving, to the increase of the building with these recesses of courtyards from the largest to the smallest with a marble courtyard. And you can see also that now the bedchamber of the king is at the right, right at the center of the whole composition of Versailles, stretching towards Paris with the city of Versailles and its trident avenues and towards west with the Grand Canal opening onto the, onto the country. So this is really a vision of the king that eventually could be uh, implemented, but after many, many years of uh, trials, of changes, and of um, successes. And uh, this is um, what I did mention, that the king at that time didn't have a private bedchamber anymore because of the new disposition. So for some time, and it's only during the reign of the 15th, that the part that I mentioned used for the royal collections the royal collections were moved out and a proper private bedchamber was created for Louis XV. So thank you very much. <laughs>